live. Now we're alive. Ryan Bidoff here in beautiful New York City in deep, dark dungeons with spooky undertones as I have my hood on. And I'm just going to be recording a number of these live hangouts without inviting anybody just because it's an easier way to record a longer form video right from my laptop and then just to be able to put it up on my blog because I think as much as you may or may not depending on the person dig my writing I think it helps to add the personal experience to put myself out there in human form you know maybe boost my trust factor a little bit and more than anything like with how I'm doing stuff these days guys whether I'm wearing hoods or appearing to be a Jedi Knight. And this is kind of like blogging like a Jedi. We delve into this topic, how to get more readers without working your butt off. But I think when I add my human element through video, and yes, we are in New York City, and yes, those are Jackies beeping at each other so much in the street that it's attempting to drown out my live hangout. Or by the time you're watching it, a taped hangout, but that's okay. That it's just fun. That's that's one of my big precursors to really kicking ass in your blogging niche of choice. Have fun, dive into your blog with that fun driver. So I was reading a couple blogs recently, reading some comments on my blog, and I'm thinking about someone who actually was chatting with via email recently, and I've seen this before. An individual talked about really being willing to put in the work. To really put in that work hardcore, I want to work hard for years. And I stopped him right away. I said, Listen, pal, please don't do that. That's the last thing you should do. It's getting too hot in here. Time for the shag to come out. That's really the last thing you want to do is to work hard because when you try to work your butt off, you create a forceful, strained, sucky energy. And that sucky energy is the exact same stuff that propagates your struggles. Example, my lovely, illustrious blogging past. For six years online plus, I was so obsessed with busting my ass to get stuff done that I struggled for six years online. It was a total nightmare. I'm trying to heat up now. This happens every time I get in front of the camera live or <laughs> it's going to go into a off-color reference from many years ago, but you know, you'll probably be able to find modeling pictures of me, some extensive Google searches. But anyway, warming up. Here we go. Here's the deal, guys. I struggled like a mother effer for so many years online because I worked hard. I strained, I strode. That's a word. I really kicked my own butt, like these Yahoos out here busting their ass in New York City. I work so hard that what happened was that tension, that energy, that force, that stress, that lower field crap, it blocked the ideas, you can count with your thumb, the people and the circumstances, who or what or whatever. Basically, it blocked everything from flowing into me. And by everything, I mean all the good stuff, all the juice, all the the creative ideas, all the creative people. You know, recently I was featured on Forbes. I was featured on Virgin Blog, Richard Branson's blog. I was featured on Neil Patel multiple times. I cyber spoke at NYU. Chris Brogan tweet endorsed me. Now a couple of these things happened, you know, a year and a half ago. But the recent features creature features were a product of me not straining and striving so damn hard and not pushing myself to get stuff done and just relaxing and having fun more than anything else and in essence guys that's the the nutshell that's the real you know it's so exciting it's so unbelievably fulfilling to see firsthand that you can get stuff done, that you can get more readers, you can draw in more followers without working hard, without working your butt off. And that's really the crux of this 
Hangout, which will be a blog post soon to be seen on bloggingfromparadise.com. And that's really the crux of it. It's how to learn how to manage your energy. That's how you get more readers without working your butt off. Now, a lot of folks are lazy, and that's okay. I'm lazy too. I'm a very, very lazy guy. But if you want to get readers, if you want to grow your readership to grow your community where it's raving, stark, mad bunch of folks, and you want to do it the lazy way with minimal work, you will have to learn how to manage your energy. And this is something that most people would rather not do because it could be very <laughs> totally freeing and totally fun, but it could be a super uncomfortable experience at times. And a lot of folks aren't really ready to dive into that hyper uncomfortable, upsetting at times and maddening and scary experience of realizing that you could just have fun and let go and everything will happen for you literally you could write to have fun and as you write to have fun when that's your driver you're going to get so much more colorful with your wording your storytelling skills are going to just multiply they're going to explode like a, say a, a, a nest of cockroaches or rats here in a, a this apartment's really, really nice, but say like in a haha shack or, you know, some slumlord. Really run a crappy, you know, abusive apartment situation and you have a nest of cockroaches exploding in the corner, multiplying. Well, that's how my blog has been recently as far as my readership, as far as my shares, all this other stuff. I didn't care about that stuff. It all goes down to I am learning how to effectively manage my energy. That's how I'm getting more readers without busting my butt, but just having fun with being lazy, with barely working compared to how I used to work. And today's a perfect example. I wrote my blog post like two days ago, super fun writing it. Then what happened is this morning I hit a publish button and I shared the post on a couple different networks. Then I did nothing else until this. Live hangout at 2.41 in the afternoon. I did nothing else all day, and the traffic keeps coming in, and I keep getting more readers. You're going to say, but don't you have to work hard? And that hard-working energy, that pushing, that straining, that striving, that idea you have to do, do, do more. I did that post recently, published it actually a couple months back, but I referenced it a lot because it's super key, that doing monster versus a being monster. When you have this belief that you cling to, this energy, that you need to do like a monster, that you need to keep doing, working hard, putting in more time, putting in more time, that creates your reality. So you'll bust your ass. And you probably struggle because you won't be with that tension. You won't be letting in the creative ideas, those eureka moments that seem to be hitting me like daily. <laughs> those inspired people, the Forbes, not a person, but entities, the Forbes magazines of the world. And the Richard Bransons of the world, they're not going to have their writers come to you and say, you know what, I want to feature you on my blog. You seem like an expert in your niche. You can't do that type of stuff. You can't manifest those results and get those extra readers if you're full of tension and anxiety because you literally you block them. You tell them to stay away, those energies. But if you're really, really doing what you're doing for fun alone and you're detaching and trusting, then the readers come in with increasingly less effort, with writing a really, really fun, detached, playful blog post that gets a lot of shares and draws more readers and draws more traffic. All because you did it from a fun space and you weren't thinking about trying to get readers. You weren't thinking about trying to get more traffic. You weren't thinking about any of that outcome-induced, tension-building energy that literally is the exact energy that blocks all that awesome sauceness. Now, guys, this is going to sound really weird. If you follow the blog and party line. Now, I'm not talking about those late night lines that you may have seen if you stay up past your bedtime. I thought it was kind of early. Or some of these fiestas they may be having here in Spanish Harlem down the road. Yeah, I'm in East Harlem now. Absolutely awesome neighborhood. Rock's apartment is gargantuan, monstrous. Rarely see an apartment like this in Manhattan, let alone New York City in general. Huge. When we're staying here for the week, what happens is the blogging party line 
to get more readers, to get more traffic, to generate more income. It's heavily focused on the idea that you must work hard and you must put in a serious amount of time, 6, 10, 12 hours a day. And I bought into this, guys, for the longest time. But literally, buying into that belief, buying into that idea and clinging to it, made me and makes most folks vibe really low, like down the energy scale. So even if they manifest success, it's all struggle. And most folks don't even manifest success. It's just an endless, endless struggle because they're down here. But when you learn to let go and do stuff for fun instead of for profit, see how it goes up higher and higher and higher, my white ass hand here in New York City. Not getting the sun that I got in Bali or recently Costa Rica or Fiji or any of the places I've been over the past four and a half years. When you buy into that idea of just doing stuff for fun, writing wise, or if you hate writing, if you just do video blogging, or if you're like, you know what, I love these live hangouts on air, tape them and boom, when I'm right to my blog, I enjoy that, I have fun doing that. What's gonna happen is the tension and stress and all that lower energy stuff and the struggle, you're gonna let that go, you're not gonna stop working hard, you're gonna work for fun, you're gonna work for more, work for fun, and it gets higher and higher and higher, and as your energy vibes higher, the readers come in, the cash flows in, the income comes in, famous people come in, high profile blogs wanna feature you. It's like an analogy I use on my blog quite a bit, and I used it recently. It's like a moth, you've seen them, we see it all the times in tropics. Sometimes moth like this freaking big, I'm not even kidding, we were in Bali, we saw a moth that was almost a foot across, which, wingspan foot, across the atlas moth which was curiously enough and i noticed from taking a very close image of this sucker inspiration from mothra from godzilla fame you know mothra from the godzilla movies i was a huge fan as a kid it was also weird that i kind of got scared of it and it hide behind couches when it came on but that's for another live hangout those moths are drawn to the flame and are drawn to the light and we see it everywhere we go in the tropics they just Bees to honey, flies to boo-boo. Readers will be drawn to you, and you will get more and more readers without having to bust your butt with just having fun if you keep having fun. Like if you write a blog post and like, you know what? This seems like it'll be fun. I'm just going to do this for fun. And like that's your primary driver. Now, how do you get to that point? Because there's going to be so much of that energy that says, I should be, you know, I got to make money with this thing. If I want to become a full-time pro blogger and all this other stuff, you know, I'm going to need readers. I'm going to need shares. Who's going to read my blog? It's kind of ridiculous doing something for fun. You know, it doesn't pay the bills, does it? Oh, my God. It makes me sick hearing that because that idea was drilled so deeply into my mind, and I just clung to it so many fucking years. I just went berserk. But. After I let that go, magic. I started doing things for fun. Now, how do you do things for fun? How do you get that baseline of knowing, you know what? I'm not going to do this for money. I'm not going to do this for traffic. You know, because I want to get more and more readers without busting my tail. I just want to do it for fun. Trust. It's the T word, and it's trust. You have to trust that something bigger than you you're an atheist, this may not be the right hangout for you. But even if you're an atheist, you could trust in the process, the creative process. If you're not an atheist, and most of my readers aren't, they believe there's some higher power out there, you trust that you are cared, that you're supported, supported, that you're cloaked, loved, hugged by this infinite presence, this infinite power, you can call it the universe, you can call it God, you can call it Gizmo, you can call it the Nazgul. I'm just starting to go pop culture on you, references some of my favorite movies. You probably wouldn't call it the Nazgul because they're between living and dead. Nor Gizmo, although wouldn't Gizmo be about the coolest personification of God? He's, he's a magua. It's not personification, magification. Another story, again, another hangout. The deal is, guys, when you trust that something's handling all the heavy lifting for you, which it really does, then you don't have to get traffic again. You don't have to get money. You don't need money. You don't need any of this stuff because it's always going to be there. Then you can just do things for fun, and I'm like, I'm just going to do this for fun, and then hand it off to the universe. 
outsource it. That's the general manager. Now, if this seems a bit too spiritual for you, tough shit. <laughs> That's how I do things. I don't care. This is how I, this is, you know, I'm not catering. This is my life and this is my experience. And that's why I've blogged from Fiji and Bali for months. I lived in Fiji for four months. Who lives in Fiji for four months? I was telling Kelly the other day, we we're walking down Fifth Avenue, some of the most in demand real estate on earth, some of the most expensive real estate on earth. We're talking Central Park West, all you fans of rich people, <laughs> all you fans of movies and TV shows, you know, I got Ghostbusters, Tavern on the Green. I mean, I was looking the other day, I was checking out some of the folks who lived there, Sting, Bob Costas, all these hedge fund guys, some of these penthouses, Central Park West, and we're walking down Fifth Avenue, where a lot of these apartments are, condos, homes, $25, 30000000 million, $35 million apartment, and these are just stunning with unbelievable views, and and I told Kelly, you know what? If one of these people will come down, and we struck up a conversation with them, I guarantee to you, if we told them that we lived in Fiji for four months, you know, someone like Sting, these people worth hundreds of millions of dollars and just celebrities, and they would shake their head because even they don't live our life. <laughs> we live a rock star life in so many ways because we're largely free. You know, a lot of folks, they're bound. They're tied down. They love what they do, but they're still bound. They okay, can you let go to where they can live. You know what? Movie star, unless it takes off between movies, and even then, usually it's you know a couple of weeks at that. Go to Fiji for four months and live in Fiji for four months. I live in Bali for six months. They live a rock star life, even beyond a rock star life. So, like, how do you get to that point? Well, this goes back to the idea of the trust in the universe. You gotta buy into it. It's not gonna happen any other way. If you want to do it without busting your tail, if you want to bust your tail, go for it. But what? And then you wouldn't have tuned in or, you know, watched, watched this blog post or tuned into this live hangout on air on Google Plus, which I may do more and more because I'm having so much fun with it. And I'm just doing things for fun now. So when you get to that point of trust, you're meditating regularly, you're being present, breathing deeply, bringing yourself back to the moment, seeing that you're always taken care of, it's so much easier to do stuff for fun because you do for fun then you let go outcomes and the outcomes are taken care of. Now look around you. Wow, it's really raining outside. Heavy rain and heavy winds coming tonight. Cold night in the city, I love it. It's cuddling weather, probably watch some Netflix, I think. Watch Narcos, strongly, strongly recommended. Awesome series. Detailing the life of Pablo Escobar from the perspective of a DEA agent, two DEA agents from the US. I think that's where the DEA is from. Anywho, when you're kind of playing around with that idea of trusting in the universe or believing you're cared for and supportive, and I like that more supported, I'll say it right eventually. I like that idea more than the idea even of trust or the word trust, because I think trust, it just, for me, carries a little bit of lower energy forced connotation. I'm thinking, okay, I have to, I have to, I need to trust. When I'm cared for, when I'm supported, when I'm loved, and basically, you know, you're blanketed, you're clothed, you're cared for, it's there, you're being supported. It just creates a much more higher energy in my being that totally lets me let go and surrender to where I just have fun doing stuff and know, you know what, I'm being cared for and supportive. But you turn around with this idea. I have to get to this eventually. I'm going to get there. You look outside, you see a blade of grass. If you have really, really good eyes. <laughs> Other than that, you see a tree. Look at a tree out the window. We even have those here. I'm here for the week, but I'm going to sit here in Manhattan. And ladies with. She almost looks like she has a large rice dish on her head, upside down. The tree doesn't have work reviews. The tree doesn't earn income. The tree doesn't try. The universe grows through it. The universe grows it. The universe handles everything. It just grows. It just does. It just is. It's being. It's being. It's a tree being a tree. And that's it. It's always taken care of. The blade of grass, same deal. Blade of grass. Or you just look at grass in general. Look at all the grass. It just grows. It just grows itself. 
itself. It's just is and handling the universe. And we're in the same universe. We have the same DNA in us, the same life force. It's just life that's always expanding. So our money, our readers, our homes, our food, that's all handled. That's taken care of when you fully accept the idea and when you trust. Then what happens is you're detached from that worry, so your creative energy is just the worry of trying to get. I need more readers. I need more income. I need more traffic. I need to build a community. I need more comments. You don't need that anymore. You outsource that. Your only job is to have fun. So when you let go all that needy, desperate, worried, tense energy, even if you think you're having fun, if you still think you're in control of everything, number one, you're freaking high, and number two, you're blocking a genius. Because once you let go of that and you outsource all that end game outcome stuff to the universe, to God, to the force, what happens is your creativity, your fun, because you're just going to have fun. You're going to be like, you know what? That's all handled. I'm not going to work anymore. I'm just going to have fun. What do I most enjoy doing? You follow your fun. Number one, you're going to pick a blog topic. If you're not only blogging on a topic, that you just have so much fun talking about all day that you blog about it. And number two, if you already picked that topic, the quality of your posts, the authenticity, the storytelling ability, the energy, it's going to skyrocket through the roof and you're going to get known. You're going to become a high rolling blogger. You are going to wow the pants off of your audience, which could make for a great visual. You'll wow the socks off them as well. You will have people comparing you to great, the great bloggers of the world. I don't know, they have great bloggers. I guess we're pretty there's a lot of phenomenal bloggers out there, but I'm almost thinking about like authors or whatever. But they'll they'll compare you to authors. Just recently somebody was talking about me running either like Hunter S. Thompson or Jack Kerouac, is that his name? I know Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. And it's like I just tap keys on a board. Like I'm not I, I, I genuinely don't think I do anything special. I just have fun. I just, you know. The bribe money for the Forbes and Virgin. No, I didn't bribe anybody. I got on there through my not hard work, through having fun and detachment. But I don't buy into any of that just because I'm just doing my thing and we're all like all so brilliant and so limitless and we just have fun and so detached and we have so much talent and just unlimited abilities within us. But in the same respect, it's just interesting to see because the second – Late last year when I just said, screw it. I'm just going to have fun and totally trust. And I'll trust a thousand percent of the time, but a hundred percent of the time I do. That's a joke. Most of the time I really do trust and I don't care. The quality of my work, my storytelling ability, it just all came to me. It like flowed in. I would just sit here and I'd be like, let me get this idea and let me run with it. And that would be that. And then I get an idea to write a blog post and I would just sit stream of consciousness, not forced, not straining and striving, just so effortless. You literally let it in. So, guys, there's really not much more to say on this topic, although I probably could talk for like five or six hours because I just love talking about this stuff, and I may in future online hangouts. But the thing is, when you're just elated with your blogging duties, quote-unquote, with writing, or more than that, if you just follow your fun, and it could be writing or it could be doing more videos or it could be just doing videos or doing podcasts whatever feels most fun to you you do that and then you learn through patient observation of everything going on around you and nature and folks who've had some wild results who've lived in bg and bali and have spoken about blogging at nyu and some of the stuff i've done that's just been amazing when you're like okay these folks trust and if these folks are doing these things and you're detaching and you're just having fun you know, maybe the nice pattern I should pay attention to, especially if I've been struggling or if I've been busting my ass to succeed. And I'm like, wait a second, I want to enjoy this lifestyle more. You know, Kelly and I, today's a pretty crappy weather day, but we can do whatever we want. Well, I walked around for a little bit. We went to the Met the other day for three, four hours, Metropolitan Museum of Art. We walked around the whole of Central Park, like three and a half hours, uh, two and a half, I guess it took us, which was so fun, you know, walking up and down Central Park West and just chilling out and watching Netflix and enjoying not the fruits of our labor, the freedom of our lifestyle. And everybody wants that. Even if you love what you do, I love what I do. I don't want to be doing that all day. I'm so multifaceted. There's so much to me, like every single human being. And when the more you trust, the more you just have fun. You're going to leverage the stuffing out of your presence without working, without 
trying to build relationships, without trying to create value. It's just all going to happen. You're going to let in the people. You're going to let in the ideas. Maybe you do a little bit of networking, but only if it's fun. Have fun and trust. Those are the two, 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 two core components, the energetic components of all my fun and all my freedom and my lifestyle. That's it, guys. That's how you get more readers without busting your tail because the more you have fun, you're going to reach so many more folks through so many more channels for your niche. Other people are going to promote you. They're going to feature you, and the readers can come flying in because of that fun and trust one-two punch. That's it for today, guys. Remember to stop by blogingparadise.com. Sign up for my free newsletter. Tired to a life of island hopping through smart blogging, my weekly updates where I direct you to all my posts from the week. And don't forget, I have 123 ebooks. No, 124 ebooks. Now I have to change that. My new Blogging Paradise and Pictures book, which is really sweet. Make sure to download it. Really, really inspired read. And also, all my other bite sized ebooks that are 99 cents. Blogging Paradise Pictures is more than that because it's a lot of pictures. And just because I felt like charging $9.99 which is awesome when you think of the inspiration inside of there. Also, my 11 fundamentals of successful blogging order, your course, available on my blog. These are really, really helpful tools for you to buy into, to build that blogging success from the inside out so you're having fun, so you, you're free, and you're just enjoying the ride. That's it for today, guys. Make sure to share this post on all your social networks. Until next time, enjoy paradise. <laughs>